they're healthy. Uh, it just seemed like we just didn't have enough firepower offensively. So, you know, that's that's the way it ended. Uh, Lakers played okay, but they just nineteen threes hard to overcome. If you're going to tell me ahead of time, you know, LeBron <clears throat> going to be close to fifty points. Yeah. He's going to make a career high nine three pointers. I'd say, okay, you know, the Lakers have a pretty good shot in this one. But then, you know, the same thing that's been kind of plaguing him a lot lately, the defense. You know, they give up 130-plus to a, to a very good team. Um, you, in, in the, another slow start, too, you know, that these first halves. Uh, you know, you had one in Portland the other night, gave up 71. Another 70-plus point uh, first half again tonight that they gave up. It's hard to overcome that, period. Even if LeBron is hitting threes like never before in his career, yeah. James, it's it's just too much to ask uh, when, yeah. you get, when you give up points yeah. like that. Yeah, How, was was it seventy seven in the first half? Yeah, it was. It was yeah. I think it was yeah, yeah seventy seven to fifty four. So they were down twenty three, yeah. and, and and some numbers just to to kind of, you know, if you didn't see the game, uh, just just to kind of give you a picture of, of what was going on. You know, the Lakers were minus twelve after the first quarter, in threes. Six different Clipper players hit threes in the first quarter. They had seven. Then in the second quarter, they went eight for ten. From three, and when you get to that half, and you're looking, they're down by 23. They were minus 24 just in that category. And by the way, they weren't playing that bad. So the Lakers were seven for 20 at the time. Yep. So the Clippers just had that kind of a first half. Like you said, they only made four in the second half. But at that point, you know, it's catch up. And uh, you know, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, they played great. They combined for 52. Norman Powell was awesome. The size of the Clippers uh, definitely hurt. They outrebounded Lakers by 15. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, when 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 they are rolling with Kawhi uh, and Paul George in the game. They, it's it's an it's a extra dimension that they have out there because they have two guys that are almost unstoppable and require a lot of attention defensively. And then the supporting cast, uh, you know, they're just waiting to knock down three. So, uh, and they got Zuby in the, in, in, and he's, he's big in the middle. Uh, it makes for a tough challenge defensively. And when they came out with that slow start, uh, it gave it gave the Clippers a lot of confidence, and they ran their offense, uh, you know, to perfection, uh, knocking down the shots that they got. Watching this Clipper team tonight, I kept saying to myself, "How's this team sixth in the West?" And, and we all know how. You know, the, their big guns have been in and out of the lineup. Uh, some troubles at point guard. Reggie, Reggie Jackson lost his starting job. Of course, he plays great tonight mm -hmm. against the Lakers, right? Uh, as he often does. But, but this Clipper team is no joke. They're very deep. They have good defense. They have good shooting, as we saw in that first half. And uh, I, it's, it's, it'll, it'll be surprising to me if they're not in the top three in the West by, by the end of the regular season. Yeah, I mean, Very I think, good team. I think you hit on the head. I mean, listen, injuries have hurt a lot of teams. I think for them, they're you know not having Kawhi and Paul George consistently. And just like a lot of teams in the West, they played inconsistent basketball. But mm -hmm. when they play the Lakers, yeah. they know the meaning of that game. And I give them a lot of credit. They always step up. All their guys do. And they just play better. That's about yeah, hard. I mean, you know, they 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 sustain, you know, their their injuries and they manage it well. I mean, I think, I think they're they 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 know who they have, they know what their goals are, and they they manage the load management fairly well to maintain mm -hmm. a six spot position, knowing that they can move up if they if, you know as the season goes on. So, uh, and of course, they their measure is the Lakers. So, any other team they get up for, but when the Lakers, they 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 want to. They want to win. They haven't lost in I don't know how long, and they continue to to dominate. The yeah, yeah. Huh. It was the last win. I mean, James. Despite it all, you know, the Lakers were down ten near the mm -hmm. midpoint of that fourth quarter. They're right there. Then you have that weird inbounds play. Yeah. You know, uh, Schroeder ends up uh, bobbling the ball. Easy three point play for Kawhi Leonard at the other end. Another another couple turnovers. Yeah. All of a sudden, the Lakers are down almost twenty again. So yeah. they're right there, despite having fifty three points on the bench between AD. Austin Reeves and Lonnie Walker the fourth. Hopefully mm. those guys come back soon, a.k.a. maybe even tomorrow for AD. Last time the Lakers beat them, you had your own tent outside yeah. <laughs> with a TV, cigars, and we weren't even allowed to talk to each other or, or watch the game. Oh, yeah, it was crazy, Oof. right? Doing crazy the times. COVID time, it was crazy. Yeah, Worthy long, condo out there. I missed my tent. So Good little setup. You missed that tent, don't you? <laughs> I do. If that skunk and didn't come by, you might still be out If the skunk hadn't showed there. up, I'd be out there That's right the now. That's the truth. I would be. I think you enjoyed your time away from us. I loved my little privacy, <laughs> but I, you know, I like coming here and spending with you guys. Uh, Back to the tent. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, Kawhi, nice story Kawhi and Paul George combined for 52 points. Brez, yeah. uh, when they're playing like this, they're, they're, they're a tough team to beat. Th this is what the Clipper front office envisioned when they made this happen a few years ago. And uh, what, what team in the West can, can they lose to in a seven-game series? I mean, there, there's some pretty good teams in the West, but if these guys are healthy, 
But the Clipper depth, uh, I'd probably put them ahead of New Orleans, New Orleans, put them ahead of Dallas. I, I would. Denver or, could be interesting. Of course, you're putting them in. You know, teams. Memphis could be interesting. Yeah. But uh, th- this is just and Zubats. All of a sudden, he's like a seasoned vet. Remember when he was yeah. a, a baby-faced Laker a few years ago? He's a very important part of this team too. Didn't he have like a 30 rebound game? Uh, it was crazy what he did uh, a month or two ago. But some really nice pieces on this Clipper team, and I'm tired of complimenting them. So I think I'm going to stop right there. Although Paul George definitely had a solid game yeah. tonight. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, it's it's Jackson and Powell and guys like that. Uh, Batum, those are the guys. And you mentioned Zubac, who I think, you know, he plays just about as well as any other center in the Love league. Zoo. He doesn't have the 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 the, the, the stats. But when it comes to putting pressure on other bigs and, and getting to a spot where he can be effective, uh, yeah. They, and then when you talk about Leonard and, uh, and, and Paul George, I can't think of a, a one-two punch. I mean, obviously, you know, you got Golden State. People will talk about Steph and Clay. They'll talk about all the – they'll talk about KD and, and Kawhi. But I think in a seven-game series, with the size of, of, of Kawhi and how they are unstoppable individually – that's going to be a problem if they continue to play the way they play. All right, well, let's get you to the highlights. The Battle of L.A., round number three. Lakers. Then, boom, trade. Things happen. Things Quickly. happen. The Lakers uh, completed a trade with the Washington Wizards, sending Kendrick Nunn and three second-round picks in return for Rui Hachimura. Former top ten pick at a Gonzaga. He went number nine overall to the Wiz. Just 24 years old, 6'8". He was averaging 13 points and shooting 54% from the field. And on his career, he averages 13 points. So here's the look at Rui's production this season. 30 games, 49%, 30 uh, 4% from three. Remember, he was over 40% last year and uh, four and a half rebounds per. So big game. Your first time in here since the trade. Lakers with a kind of a log jam at that guard position. We talked a lot about that. Austin Reeves, Lonnie Walker coming back. So many guards, but a shortage at the wing position. With Rui, the 24-year-old, you kind of get that. He's got a strong mid-range game. 6'8", do you like it when you heard it? Yeah, uh, it made sense. Uh, I know that uh, the decisions to make trades right now with the Lakers are very delicate as to you know what they want to do, what they want to give up. Uh, but uh, Ruya is uh, is a player that's proven uh, that he has the size and the agility and the the skills uh, to be extremely versatile. A nice wingman uh, can shoot. The three geeter, uh, and I think he 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 he's going to add an extra dimension uh, to that outside shot. You know, he's going to open up things for him a little bit in, in addition to what they already have. James, you know what I like right there? Three second round picks. Mm-hmm. What's not there? A first round pick. You know, or, or even two first round picks. Because so much talk about those picks for so many months. And the Lakers didn't have to part with either one of them. Yeah. So you get a good player who admittedly was not starting in Washington. He was kind of stuck behind a very good player in Kyle Kuzma. Yeah. But you get a young wing. He's only 24. He, you already hit on it. The roster's been imbalanced since training yeah. camp. You know, we know that. The front office knew that. Tons of guards, but not enough threes. Maybe another big man as well. So right now, a, a nice step towards that direction, rebalancing the roster with a guy can play a little defense too. He's six foot eight. Mm-hmm. Seven foot two wingspan. Yeah. That's what he was mm. measured at at the combine a few years back. Yeah, thirty point uh, game. He's coming off of as well. Yeah, so you know he, he has that ability to get buckets. And listen, the expectation is that he's going to start alongside LeBron and AD, a guy that can stretch the floor. Do you like that fit, Big Game James? Possibly. Yeah, it, it gives them that that size as you just talked about, and a guy that can stick it from the outside. They will not be able to leave him at all. If they uh, have any offense inside AD or LeBron going downhill, he'll definitely be a guy that you can have to stay home on uh, if he knocks down his threes consistently. So I don't know what Ham's going to do. He's got a lot of, you know, when Walker comes back and Reeves comes back and all these players. Uh, but at 6'8", 